والله يدعو الى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء الى صراط مستقيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين وصلى الله وسلم على عبده ونبيه محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم Dear respected viewers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I'm honored to welcome you to your program a program that needs your own feedback, comments, and questions. The nobles, the people that we love the most, the people that we aspire that Allah would resurrect us along with them, that people we wish to have the same destination along with them. Dear viewers, this episode will be about a great lady, a noble lady, a lady who accompanied her husband into his difficulties. Later on, she was appointed to be among the mothers of the believers. I usually say to myself and some of my colleagues, that sometimes it's difficult to talk about certain personalities. You fear, you have a feeling of inferiority in front of some of those great personalities. People who have contributed abundantly for the sake of Allah. They deny themselves, therefore this deen would prevail. They sacrificed a lot for the sake that this way of Allah will be fresh, clear, authentic to us. This lady is Ummu Salama and her name is Hind bintu Abi Umayya ibn al-Mughira al-Makhzumiyya. But she is well known for her father's nickname, Hind Bintu Zad al-Rakm, Hind, the daughter of the provider of the travelers. Her father was among the Arab nobleties. He was so generous that the caravans would stop at his doorsteps and he would provide them with sustenance. Guests did not have to take appointments with him to come, to dine with him. He would provide them whatever they needed. She was brought up in such a family where generosity is prevailing, is a custom that everybody has acquired within the family. This lady, Hind, got married to Abi Salama, one of the great Qurayshis who is related to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The whole family accepted the new way of life that contradicted with the old order that was taking place in Mecca. It was not the slaves and the poor people who suffered on the hands of the vicious Qurayshis. No, even the nobilities among the Qurayshis who rejected the old customs 
and the worship of the idols faced the brutality of those savage people. They were tortured and punished for their acceptance of this deen to the extent that this family sought the permission of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to migrate to another faraway land, a foreign country, a foreign continent where a foreign language is spoken, where a foreign language culture existed, but they wanted to look for a haven where they can practice their belief in security. She, Umm Salama, along with her husband and their child, Salama, migrated to Abyssinia. And this was the first contact between the two continents, a contact of peace, of real cultural dialogue, of real cross-cultural understanding that resulted that you find millions of people, not in Africa, but within Ethiopia itself, have accepted Islam because of the message of peace that was transmitted with the new immigrants, with the refugees who moved from Mecca to Abyssinia. Anyway, they spent some time, but their hearts and minds were with the Prophet ﷺ and his companions in Mecca. They missed the presence of Rasulullah. They missed the knowledge that they used to get on a daily basis, some even on an hourly basis. Now they are very remote. No means of communication were available. So, news came to them that the Qurayshis have stopped harassing the Muslims. And that was propaganda. was not true. Because the Qurayshis wanted to get those people, their sons and daughters back, especially those who came from the dynasties of Quraysh. That the, the Arabs started insulting these families these called noble families, that their children have rebelled against their own customs and ways of life and accepted that of Muhammad ﷺ. They thought that these, this information regarding the easing of the life in Mecca was true. So they took the chance and came back to Mecca. At that time, the Prophet ﷺ had already migrated to Medina. They were confronted with the reality that those evil people have not changed yet. Their treatment have become worse. Now they could catch some of the followers of Muhammad ﷺ who was able to escape from Mecca. So the torture was greater. They could not stay. They decided to find ways through which they would rejoin Prophet Muhammad ﷺ in Medina. But the problem is, there were only very few Muslims in Mecca at that time. And the Meccans polytheists were observing the movements of those Muslims. And they realized that they would seek the chance to run away and follow Prophet Muhammad ﷺ in Medina. One day Abu Salama and his wife Umm Salama, the noble personality of this episode, decided to take their children and move from Mecca. While leaving Mecca, at the outskirts of Mecca, they were stopped by their families. Abu Salama belonged to Bani Asad, and Umm Salama belonged to Bani Makhzum. 
and both are rivalries. It is the hatred of jahiliya, of ignorance. Both family try to stop their own children, so-called children, Abu Salama and Umm Salama. Mature enough to decide for themselves, but according to those people, no, they had no will. They should be forced to stay, and even if they could, they would force them to change their own belief. But they said no. Abu Salama was able to run away. He left his wife and children behind. خيركم من تعلم القرآن وعلمه ورتل القرآن ترتينا Learning how to recite the Quran properly Learning the meaning of what we recite Concluding the ahkam from the verses which we recite Trying to implement what we learn in our daily life we Would listen to the participants and the guests Well take your phone calls We're going to recite life we we'll listen to your recitation and we'll correct it according to the rules and regulations which will state in each episode. Now your dream will come true. <laughs> Dear viewers, now Hind Umm Salama is alone with her child. Her husband left her because he had to go to Prophet Muhammad وسلم, even if he had to leave part of his body. And she was one of the parts of his body, a very important bar part. Along with his own child but nothing prevented those people from going into the way of Allah all pressures could be overcome but the problem is the two tribes that were rivalries were looking at the lady and her son Abu Salama's tribe Banu Asad jumped on the child said to Banu Makhzum, if you're going to take your daughter, we're going to take our son, as if this son did not belong to his mother. And they started pulling the child from both sides until one of his arms was broken. Anyway, Banu Asad took their son, and Banu Makhzum took their daughter and separated the mother from the son. This tells you the kind of ignorance, the kind of rudeness, the kind of savageness that those people are having. Very difficult people. This would really remind you of the sacrifices that the early companions of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, dealt with such kind of merciless people. Umm Salama was in a very difficult situation. Now, she could not go to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. She cannot make, could not migrate. She lost her husband. She's been separated from her son. What could a poor woman do in such an ignorant society? In such society that looked as woman, at women as trivial worthless even of living to some of them. She spent one full year mourning the situation, moving to the place where she was separated from her husband, where her child was taken away from her. She was not even allowed to see her own child. Every day, every morning, she would go to that place crying, until the evening, until she gets tired of crying. 
would come back with sadness and sorrow that escalated in her heart. Some of what we might call people who have mercy after one year of doing so realized that and they went to both tribes and said this woman is not going to change her mind no matter what you do to her even if you cut her to pieces so why didn't you just give her her child and let her go finally they agreed إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى With hardship there is ease. إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى With hardship there is ease. Those are very patient people. Sometimes we lose our deen for nothing. But those people safeguarded their deen under the most difficult situations. She took her child said, Alhamdulillah. Now she is ready to leave. They just give her a camel and say, go wherever you want to go. You are not our daughter and we care less about you. On her way, going to Medina through a place called At-Tan'im in Mecca, on the way to Medina, while she was riding the camel alone, a noble man passed by her by the name of Uthman ibn Talha. He looked at her and he said, Hint, the daughter of the provider of the travelers, alone? He remembered her father and how generous he was. She was he was known by the nickname and she was famous to be Hint, the daughter of of the provider of the travelers. She said, I'm going alone. She said, where are you going? She said, to Medina. He said, by Allah, I will not let you go alone. A woman traveling alone for days in a foreign territory, a dangerous trip that men don't travel alone in, and you're going by yourself with a child? No way. He took her camel and guided her, escorted her until he reached the outskirts of Medina, Quba. He said, that is the land of your husband. This is Medina, this is Yathrib, where your husband is living along with Muhammad. That time he was not a Muslim. But let's pause for a second to talk about this noble man that Ummu Salama, may Allah be pleased with her, said, I have never seen such a noble and respectable man in my life. He never looked at me. He was always in my service, serve, at my service with humbleness and care. Inna ma'al usri yusra. Allah sent a man, an unbeliever, to help her. Uthman ibn, Abi, ibn Talha was in charge of the keys of the Kaaba. And this is a great honor that they had, Banu Shayba had, before Islam. When the Prophet Sallallahu liberated Mecca, took Mecca by force, Banu Talib, the family of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they used to serve water to the pilgrims when they come to Mecca. They do that for free and they were proud of doing so even before Islam. And they continued after Islam. The Prophet himself used to draw water from the well of Zamzam for the Hajjaj, for the pilgrims. Al-Abbas and Ali were next to the Prophet and they were inside the Kaaba. Before they get inside the Kaaba, Ali took the keys from Uthman ibn Talha. They wanted to join the honor 
of serving water to the pilgrims to be the gatekeepers of the Kaaba. A great honor. And they entered along with the Prophet Sallallahu to the Kaaba. Inside the Kaaba. But revelation came to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَأْمُرُكُمْ أَن تُؤَدُّ الْأَمَانَاتِ إِلَىٰ أَهْلِهَا وَإِنْ حَكَمْتُ وَإِذَا حَكَمْتُمْ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ أَن تَحْكُمُ بِالْعَدْلِ The translation of this verse will be read by my colleague Mustafa, may Allah reward him. This is verse 58, chapter 4, the chapter of women. Almighty Allah says, Indeed, Allah commands you to render trusts to whom they are due. And when you judge between people, to judge with justice. Excellent is that which Allah instructs you. Indeed, Allah is ever hearing and seeing. Thank you. This verse revealed to Prophet Muhammad wasallam. To remind him what happened was not right. This trust was given to those people. And they were trustworthy to keep the Kaaba before Islam. They are the ones who will continue safeguarding the Kaaba. And having the key to the Kaaba. The Prophet ﷺ took the keys from Ali and he gave it to Uthman. And he said, it is for you until the day of judgment. Only a tyrant will take it from you. And it is until today, I will continue until the day of judgment. The keys of the Kaaba are in the hands of Bani Shaiba. We go back to our noble personality, Ummu Salama. May Allah be pleased with her. You cannot imagine how happy she was when she was approaching Medina. I could feel that she was able to smell the smell of her husband. She could hear the sounds of Prophet, the voice of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and his companions. She could hear the adhan in the Prophet's mosque. She went to rejoin with her beloved husband. He was awaiting her as if he was standing on charcoal. He missed her so much and he missed his child as well. She joined him in a new abode, in a new life where they practiced the religion in safety and security, peacefully along with the Prophet ﷺ and his other companions. But life does not continue like that. You know, ease changes. Otherwise, this won't be a worldly life. Abu Salama, may Allah be pleased with him, was very close to the Prophet ﷺ. He was able to attend Badr. And he attended Uhud as well, where he got injured. And his injury was deep. Abu Salama spent a lot of time nursing her husband. But as long as it is for the sake of Allah, everything could be compensated for. But not when somebody loses his own faith on Allah. Yes, they get injured. They have wounds, psychological, emotional, and physical wounds. But they never lost their trust in Allah. They never lost their trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward them. This is a family that started its life with sufferings for the sake of Allah. And the suffering continues, but they were even enjoying it as long as it was for the sake of Allah. Since we cannot finish talking about the life of this great lady, the noble, personality of this episode of Musalama, may Allah be pleased with her, will continue in the other episode talking inshallah about the life of this great lady. Dear respected viewers, I hope to meet you in the continuation of this episode and the next episode inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.